Welcome to Wax Talk. Listen to conversations revolving around the business of waxing and the beauty industry. Business advice, technical tips, and honest talk answering questions no one has dared to ask. As a thank you for listening, use promo code PRPODCAST30 when you shop at syrapill.com. Additional terms and conditions may apply. Hi, welcome to Wax Talk by Peron Rigaud. I am Callie Van Elst, the National Training Director for Peron Rigaud, and today we have Hunter Donia as a guest. Hunter has been named Beauty Launch Pads, youngest up-and-coming hairstylist of 2020, Modern Salon's Top 100 Stylist of 2021, and he was also the 2021 Face of Sola Salons. So we're very excited to have Hunter. I think you guys are going to learn so much how to make more money in your salon and automations and systems. So welcome, Hunter, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. My name is Hunter Donia. I um, am business. I'm a business industry educator. So I teach hairstylists how to automate and systematize their beauty business so that they can uh, regain more work-life balance and then also have more time and energy to actually focus on growing the business as well too. I've been doing uh, education for about six years now, three and a half years. I've been doing my own independent education and I've helped over a thousand stylists um, through my programs go ahead and put systems into place that has really allowed them to build more scalability in their business, in their beauty business specifically. Um, And we have people of all types of service backgrounds. So we have majoritively hairstylists. However, we have a ton of estheticians and we have a ton of nail techs who actually end up joining us and see a lot of success as well. There's a ton of things that we share in common together as a beauty industry as a whole. And so I'm really excited to get to chat with you guys today um, and maybe speak to a little bit of a different audience than I normally speak to. It's going to be a fun time. So tell the listeners, like, what does it mean when you say automate and like automation and like systems like what does that yeah. mean well so automation it by itself is definitely definitely in my definition more lending towards the technology that you have in your business and Mm -hmm. taking processes that you would normally manually have to do and then making it so you do not have to manually do them anymore. And technology is taking that off of your hands and taking care of it for you. Um, And there's tons of processes that we'll get into, I'm sure, in this episode that I refer to when it comes to teaching about automation. Then systems, on the other hand, systems you could look at uh, as a umbrella term where automation is maybe under that or a way of implementing a system um, or having one, but systems also have to do with just the processes and the way that you go about things and the fundamentals and foundations that you build your business upon so that you are guaranteeing the most prop, the so that way you are creating the most, the highest probability of a desired outcome um, in your business on a consistent basis. So hopefully mm-hmm. those weren't too crazy technical definitions, no. but that's how I would define them. Yeah, I love that. And for myself, even though I'm older, I'm obsessed with anything that can make my business run smoother, it, yeah. whether it's in my beauty business with clients or in my you know, my I'm in the national training director for Prime Go. Even here, yeah. I love as many systems that automate things for me because, like, you know, I feel like without it, you can really um, get burnt out. Yes. Um, and I feel like you lose time a lot yep. of time. So what's like, what is your favorite? Like, what's your favorite? Well, I would love to touch on like what you just shared and like why you love it so much. Cause so, so I, there's a lot of, there, there's like a business concept and maybe even just a general philosophical concept of like, you kind of have two resources within this society and world that we live in. Um, Particularly as a business owner, you have two resources, you have money and you have time right? Yeah. Money is something that you can always regenerate. You can always make more money. There's technically an unlimited amount of money for you to make in your lifetime. When it comes to time, you are only given one set amount of time in your short, beautiful little life, right? And Mm -hmm. so as a CEO, 
a, the the C, successful CEOs who have grown like Fortune 500 companies, they have been able to do so only because they understand the value of their time and value it even more than money because they realize, as the old saying goes, that money is time. Mm -hmm. And the more that we focus on delegating our time and using our time wisely to then be able to focus on the activities that are making us the most money and growing the business the fastest and the largest and the easiest, um, the more successful the business is going to be at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. so that's why I really love talking about automations and systems and helping people delegate that time to the right places, because our industry isn't one in which we are traditionally looking at our businesses as businesses or looking at it as analytically as any Fortune 500 company CEO would, where this is the type of stuff that is really modern and innovative that is really going to help you stay ahead of the curve mm -hmm. and prevent you as an independent human from burning out, but also simultaneously allow you to grow the business at an accelerated pace as well, too. Yeah, especially for people that are in the service industry, because our time is worth money in like even more than one way. 100%. And I'm a huge advocate of like you, like every moment of your day should be booked. And yep. if it's not, then there's a lot to look at. And sure. there's so many ways to get those, especially now a lot of people I know on social media are talking about they're slow right now, everything's quiet, they're freaking out about the economy. But I'm like, it start. I always say start with where you are and the clients that you have. Like if you have a client in your chair, like and you've got an Max hour market. after that, that's a huge opportunity because they, there's things that they don't even know that they need. Um, right. But that, I mean, that's a whole different story. I could go on about that for a long time, 100%. but time I'm, is I'm like I'm on the same huge. page as you. <laughs> yeah, you have to like, you have to like utilize your time. Yeah. Um, so I love that a lot. I want to talk about healthy boundaries for salon professionals too. And yeah. I think that's sort like a lot of this crosses over into each other, but um, right. gosh, you know, I've been in this industry a very long time. Mm -hmm. And well, honestly, boundaries are something I, I struggle with in my entire um, life, mm -hmm. <laughs> but especially professionally. It's like, how, yeah. what do you say and how, because I see it all the time. What, there's so many different ways where um, professionals in our beauty industry um, are not tight with our boundaries in a lot of different yeah. ways. So what do you say about this? Well, so I'm the same way as you. I am, and I think a lot of us as service providers are for multiple reasons, number one, um, a lot of the times we get into this industry because we are impact driven and we fall mm. in love with taking care of people and it yeah. makes us feel really good and inflates our ego and releases dopamine and chemicals in our brain when we make impact in other people's lives and mm. when we serve them, right? So yes. we want to support and help other people. We want to make other people feel beautiful inherently with the career that we've chosen um, as human beings. And then the second thing is also traditionally our industry has, has a lot of traditional habits um, of over exerting ourselves and yeah. of the belief that we have to be working our absolute asses off to be successful and that we have to say yes and the customer is always right as well. Yeah. And so a lot of that is really deeply seated in our brains just because of the historical narrative that we've always kind of lived by as an industry. And so because of that, you know, the nature of the human of human beings that get into this industry very much have those two things working, working against us sometimes, but yeah. also so they can be really powerful tools um, at the same time, but still, like they, it can often, it can oftentimes, like you share, um, create a lot of difficulty for us and create a lot of burnout for us and create resentment towards our job. When in reality, I mean, we are a lot of the time causing the problems for ourselves. Right. I think that we oftentimes will blame the client. Um, I see a lot of people <laughs> post on their social media stories and say, "Oh, well, my, when you cancel on me, you don't realize that I'm losing all this money in a day." And blah blah blah. Oh, blah, blah. My Gosh, and, yeah, it makes me crazy. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I can't believe this person would do this to me or say this thing to me. And it's like, <laughs> well, if you had procedures, systems in place that mitigated this behavior in the first place, then, or if you did not create an environment in which people felt like they could disrespect you, right, then maybe you wouldn't be experiencing these types of things. And mm -hmm. I think that it's naive to just assume that every single person who's going to come to see you understands what that actually looks like for how to respect you as a business owner. Um, but it all comes back to how are you creating an environment around you yes. that 
that holds you accountable to your boundaries mm -hmm. and then also mitigates any unwanted behavior that could make it so you would be more likely to be walked over or not hold yourself to that same standard that you would like to be held to. I guess you Yeah, like you have to have a cancellation policy and you mm -hmm. have to adhere to it. Yep. You also, I think it's really important. I mean, some people even have, especially for, for like for us, if you book tight appointment times, you know, you need to have a policy like how late are you going to take a client? I mean, for right. me, I'm overly flexible, like you just said, most people are. But I think that it drives me a little bit crazy, too, on social media when a lot of licensed professionals in the beauty industry talk badly of their clients. I'm like, yeah. they love you and they're coming to you because they love you. And, you know, if you take the money, you know, 20, even $25 a day, I've done the math is $24,000 in that year. If you're, you know, five days a week, I mean, th they're paying bills for you. Yep. And it's like, we love them. And we just have to explain to them in a kind way, like, hey, like you missed your appointment, you know, and then whatever your policy or procedure is, and then right. you have to have it posted and then adhere to it. And it doesn't have to be like they're against you. It's not like you against the client. It's no. like they're like I love I love my clients, and I don't you know if they don't show up, I'm like you know that's my problem. I don't have tight boundaries, but I don't get mad well, at them and, either. <laughs> here's the thing, though. There's there's very much there's very much room for flexibility as far as this stuff goes. Yeah. You being a kind, understanding human being is mm -hmm. being a good business owner. So yeah. I'm a really big firm believer in, instead of using our policies to be able to enact the discipline, mm -hmm. such as charging the cancellation fee, I'm a big firm believer of how can we have these policies in place to prevent the bad behavior or unwanted behavior in the first place. Yes. So therefore, you have those things set in place up front. They are read, communicated to, and communicated to and signed. And I am mm -hmm. a firm believer of actually having your policy signed every single appointment, read and agreed to every single appointment. And that's not just your cancellation fee. That's not just your lateness fee. That's also like a liability waiver, particularly for this audience and what you guys are doing. Same. Like yeah, mm -hmm. very much a liability waiver. And that will allow you to make sure that th those things and, and communicating how to respect you is always top of mind. And it wasn't just said to that person once when they first came to see you mm -hmm. for, for the very first time and you maybe had them sign your policies once, right? Yeah. And I know that, that might sound a little bit strict and crazy and like, oh, like, damn, I'm not going to have my client do that every single time. That's annoying. But there are ways to do it that I teach in my programs that are actually making the client experience even better. And I think that's not, that's something that's important to understand is that boundaries allow you to create a client experience that is even better boundaries mm -hmm. allow you to serve a client much better you brought up a lateness a lateness policy where mm -hmm. if somebody is showing up past x amount of minutes i know i'm not gonna be able to give this person a great service so therefore mm -hmm. that's a boundary that you have in order to serve that client better yeah even if true. you have to say no in the moment because mm -hmm. you're going to do a disservice to them if you're taking them and you're they're 15 minutes late and you know you have the next person mm -hmm. and then also it's to serve and respect your other clients because if you're running behind then you're going to be inconveniencing the people who showed up on time after that appointment and so looking at boundaries as not a selfish thing that we have to be guilty about and instead thinking about them and also strategically implementing them in a way that serves the client mm -hmm. is how we can start to take back our power and Get and gift ourselves some of that work-life balance and ease back into our daily practice, but also how we can actually grow our business and create a more professional, beautiful experience for the client as well. Yeah, I love that. And the the waiver can be sent, all of these forms can be sent like via text two yep. days before their appointment yep. and they can just sign it digitally and it goes right into the cloud and you have to do nothing. And I'm sure 100%. you have great ideas And that's where ideas automation is so beautiful yeah. and it comes into play and helps you hold yourself accountable to these boundaries. Yes. See, that's the thing that about boundaries is that 
like you said, you're kind of flexible sometimes. I can be flexible sometimes. I know that I'm flexible. only a human being. And yes. so when I was in my, when I first started my salon suite business, I blew that shit up. It was like three and a half months book salad, five new client requests a week. It was ridiculous. And I was working so hard to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I also had a really la strong lack of boundaries because I was so grateful with all of this business that exploded for me. So grateful to these people and I wanted to take care of them. So when when I'm sitting there and I'm looking this person in the eye, it's really hard for me to stay strong and firm and say exactly what I want to say and say no when I when I want to say no because I know that's what's best for me. So what I ended up doing because I was getting really burnt out of all this craziness that I had, although I had all the success, I was screwing myself over and I had no energy left at the end of the day. Yeah. And I was getting really resentful. I started to create systems and automate those processes so that I would prevent the, the burnout and it, I would not have to be the one to always stay strong and have to have these push through my emotions to enact these boundaries. So like a great example of that is like online booking. So I am an online booking only girl. Okay. So like you cannot book an appointment through me. You have to book the appointment online. And mm -hmm. that even goes for, and this is controversial, but that even goes for in the chair. So if I have mm -hmm. somebody who I just finished their appointment and they are, it's Anne, let's say I freaking love Anne. She's a fantastic uh, a client of mine. I love her. And we just had a beautiful three hour appointment together and it's all done. And I look her in the eye and I'm like, all right, Anne, when do you want to come back to see me? She's like, oh, in four weeks, I have a wedding and I really need to make sure that my hair looks good. And I look at my calendar in four weeks. I have no availability for when she would like to get in with me. So I'm looking her in the eyes. I love freaking Anne so much. And what am I going to do? I'm going to maybe squeeze her in. I'm going to do a longer day. I'm going to have an eight to that's now a 12 hour day. I'm going to be exhausted, burnt out, and I'm not going to do a good job on her hair. This like literally happened to me. I ended up turning her hair purple and it what her name was Anne. <laughs> and it was not supposed to be purple. It was supposed to be like a gold balayage. So it was a really important lesson for me mm -hmm. that like I need to do something to make sure that this is not happening because it's not good for me and it's not good for my client either. So in order for me to not screw myself over, I hand them the iPad and I say, here's the online booking. This is going to very fairly show you all of my time and availability. And then you can choose what day and time you want to come in. And then therefore I give up my own control over mm -hmm. being able to mess myself up or step outside my boundaries by squeezing somebody in. And then also that goes for in between the appointment communication and mitigating your boundary, your, uh, your overextending of yourself with client communication, because then you can give them your online booking link. They, they know they can access it whenever they want to, and they can take care of business with, to do business with you without you actually having to be the one who's texting them and calling them and rescheduling them all the freaking time in between appointments. Oh yeah. Cause I have people, they have my phone number, they have every WhatsApp, whatever. Do yep. I love that you still use your booking link, but you have them book before they leave but you just give them the iPad and they book right then. It depends. It depends mm -hmm. because I have something that I call a limited booking range. So um, uh, I, I think that pre-booking and having somebody book before they leave is something that is a strategy that will that is worth considering, particularly when you are first starting a business and mm -hmm. when, you, when you are really trying to build your foundation of clientele. At a certain point, I believe that particular to the types of services that you're doing, the average frequency of visit of the clients that you're seeing, um, majoritively, I think that rethinking your pre-booking and the way that you're doing it is something that could be a cool option for you. So for example, for me, like I'm somebody who specializes in low maintenance color and body. So mm. these people are coming to see me on an average frequency of every like three months, right? Yeah. So I have no idea. I don't know about you, Callie. I have no idea what the hell is going on in my life three <laughs> months from today. I don't even know what's going on tomorrow. All right. Same. And I don't think our clients know that either. No. And so I will only pre-book people out eight weeks ahead of time. So my calendar is only open eight weeks ahead of time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So yeah. that I am, which does multiple things. Number one, it allows me to take off a day of work just in case I need to if I have an event mm -hmm. coming up and not have to move people around and reschedule people and cancel people's appointment. It allows the client to book when they're ready to book mm -hmm. and make it so they're more likely to actually show up to the appointment because they are booking it sooner to the actual date of the appointment. So they're mm -hmm. going to be more sure that they can actually make it. Um, and it's also actually statistically proven that 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 is what women who visit salons in the United States 
prefer. They would rather not pre-book. They would rather book an appointment when they're ready to. And there are automations and systems that you can set up remind, that will mm. keep you top of mind in between the appointments and will remind them to book an appointment so you can retain them without feeling like you have to pre-book them before they leave the door. Yeah, I like that better. I really do think we need to get away because in my generation, you know, it was always like pre-book, pre-book, pre-book. Yes. And I'm really like, you know, a lot of med spas do that. A lot of med spas only have their calendars open for 90 days and that's mm-hmm. it. And then yep. they open like one month at a time. And I think that it also, it's sort of, it does. It creates urgency like, oh, my gosh, because when you yes. see this is the only time and it's like, when is that going to open up? You're like, oh, my gosh, I have to do it. I have exactly. to do it Exactly. 100 percent. Yes. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Like that's Taylor Swift's t- concert tickets. Like if yeah. you like if y'all think that it the reason why a Taylor Swift concert ticket is ten thousand dollars on StubHub is because there is a scarcity and a lack of the tickets. Right. Mm-hmm. So I love that you brought up too. It is in, it, it will help you with your retention because you are creating that scarcity. Very much so. Do you I also think boundaries with clients falls heavily into charging them appropriately. Uh-huh. Especially yes. for color, because I'm sure a lot of stylists are gonna go grab another bowl of bleach because 100%. the client's hair is like way longer than they thought. And they're spending so much money on product and they're not tacking that on because they feel bad. Yep. Yes. Right? Um, emotional discounting is what some people will call it. Just discounting the service when they really don't intend to um, is very much something that plagues the this industry. This is problem. <laughs> I'm like, I love you so much that you don't even have to pay today. I totally. just, you're like, you're like my friend. I'm like, honestly, like my clients are my only social life at this point in my life. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll just pay you. Like, just come in. We need to hang out. Well, and you know, I oh. love that you just said that, that like, I'll just pay you because that's genuinely what you're doing. Like you are literally giving this somebody literally. money by not trying charging them, right? Right. So um, two (laughs) things for this. Number one, I talked about online booking only, and I think that that can be a really great way to um, uh, uh, help you and soothe you in emotional discounting because, and this is, I'm not saying you directly, I'm just saying to anybody who's listening to this, um, because, and because even in my own experience, because somebody is seeing the price when they book the appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that they saw the price, they committed to it when they booked for that date and time, and then therefore you're going to be able to allow you're going to be able to feel more confident in fully charging that having a conversation about that also before you render the service too i think is really great and having the consult in the consultation saying and i know that you booked this online did you see the price are you prepared to pay x today and then you're assured that that's the price and then there you go and then you can you know that you can charge it at the end with confidence and you've created that communication the other thing that allowing that, allowing that person to uh, see that price online does is it allows them to budget better and feel more comfortable and confident in what they're going to pay when they actually get to the space, you Mm -hmm. know? And so that leaves more room for somebody's budget, not just for the max of what they were getting into, but it also leaves more room and preparedness for even more sales, more Mm -hmm. add-on sales, more retail sales, because if somebody wasn't... wasn't shocked or unprepared with just what the service is going to be, then they're going to be a little bit more flexible in wanting to get other services or purchase products as well, too. I think especially for big ticket items, because they've probably prepared for that and they've saved for that. Like, I know, like, I... I'm awful. Like I get a full balayage only like once a year, but mm-hmm. I'm prepared for that. I know it's going to cost me a fortune, right? but I have that money set. I'm probably going to also get my products at that same time. Yep. And, you know, I might do a little touch up here or there like throughout the year, but really it's like, I know that big ticket time. I'm re- I want You're to ready. spend it because yep. I feel and like I haven't. Some- yeah. I'm so sorry to cut you off. It creates a more comfortable experience for you, Mm -hmm. right? And if you want somebody to come back and see you on a frequent basis, then you want to create that type of predictability and that comfort. I mean, that's just a primal instinct that we as humans want and need and crave. And if you create a more comfortable and predictable experience around the budget, around what you're going to get into every single time, then you're going to be able to increase your retention. There's a second thing that I do to help with emotional discounting if you have time to hear it. I have time. Okay. I want to hear so, it. I need okay. to hear it. <laughs> okay, cool. So the second thing is is making sure that the base level of your services are inclusive of the uh, – as far as price goes and also the actual services that you're going to uh, implement or uh, enact. The base service 
those little add-ons that would normally be a la carte add-ons are built into that base service. And I know that it's difficult to conceptualize and sometimes particular, particularly with the types of services that you're doing, because I know that I'm speaking to all types of beauty professionals mm-hmm. right now, not just hair stylists. But are you talking about like uh, like blow dry? So yes, yes. So mm-hmm. like if you are, it, like, so a lot of the times with hair stylists, it's like, we will do a partial balayage. So that actually is just like the highlighting of the hair, right? right? And so we would have a partial balayage price, which is 100 bucks. Then we also have to do a toner, which is going to be maybe $30, right? Mm-hmm. And then we also have a bond builder that we put in the lightener, which we would like to charge $25 more for. And then we have the haircut, which is going to be a hun- another $100, right? Mm-hmm. And so what ends up happening is, is, is there's all these little charges. And so then you have to explain each and every one of those things to the client up front. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. You have to have this awkward conversation. You give your client more leverage over how you're charging and the process that you're doing to get them the results that they're looking for because now you're giving them the option, right, of what they want to pay for and what they don't want to pay for. And then you're setting yourself up for failure because you know that you have to add all these different line Mm -hmm. items on there and it can be difficult for us as humans, as emotional, caring humans to add all of those line items on Mm -hmm. there. But if you know 90% of the time when you do this balayage, you're going to have a toner and you're going to have a bond builder. Why not just build it into the price up front? I just had, oh my God, I just re-signed my lease. I live in Philadelphia in the neighborhood and I love (laughs) my place. So I just re-signed my lease and it they 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 didn't raise my rent too much, which I was like happy about. But they added like this like fifteen dollar fee monthly to for to use their online resident portal to pay my rent. I'm like, <laughs> just add fifteen dollars <laughs> to, the yeah. to the rent. Like this is ridiculous. Like now, so now you're also giving your your customer another reason to question your pricing and mm-hmm. and understand why you're being charged that. And it feels I don't want that. No, and it feels like to the client, it feels very like nickel and dimey to totally. me. I we are so on the same page with this. It's literally one of my pet peeves. I worked yes. for I've worked for a lot of uh, big names, mostly in Chicago, and I worked for um, someone once that I loved, very well known in this industry in the in as a hairstylist. And he said, "You cannot give your client the option." to get a blow dry because right. your work is art they because they may choose to not get it and now they're walking out the door of your salon with your name on it yep. with wet hair yep. you can't see the color you don't see the cut they're unfinished and then i worked for another um person and they charged you know separately for a blow dry and i'm just like just it's a haircut The blow dry, keep the blow dry with the haircut because a lot of clients are going to book a haircut and assume they're getting it blow dried. 100%. You know, so we are so on the same page with that. And you're also reserving a a set amount of time for that, the completion of the entire service. Mm -hmm. So let's say that your haircut is an hour and it takes you 15 minutes to blow dry somebody. You book somebody for an hour and that and and that's a hundred bucks, right? But then you have, but then they don't get the blow dry, and then you just you only take forty five minutes for the appointment, and you make less money because you're charging separately for the blow dry. You just now have fifteen minutes of your time that was reserved, and now you're not going to make money on because that person opted out of it. So, oh I mean, my gosh, you, you're you know right. What I mean? You're so right. Like, you have a 15 minute gap that can never get booked because it's period. 15 exactly. So oh my even God. if here's the thing, even if this person doesn't want to get a blow dry, that's cool, honey. But you're still going to be paying me the full price for the service because True. this was 15 minutes of my time where I could have been making that money. We have a little bit of time left. I want to talk about um, this was something really interesting to me that I never thought of. I okay. saw I think it was on Instagram. You're on TikTok, though, too, right? I wish I was on TikTok, girl. I've been talking about getting on there for so long. I'm such oh, a hypocrite. Why do I think I saw you there? Regardless. Know, Go ahead. So you said something about um, like the, your booking link to not put it on Instagram, on, yeah. your, on your page. Tell oh, So why? Okay. Because so, everyone does that. Yep. So okay. here's the thing. This is going to differ for every single person, but here's why this is something that I kind of preach to and that I practice in my own business. 
Um, there's multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, being an independent salon owner and just being by yourself mm -hmm. makes makes a pretty strong case for this um, or something for you to consider. Like for me, particularly being a queer individual living in living and working in a rural county, um, I get concerned. And because I when I had my salon suite, I was not in Philadelphia. I was literally in Amish country, Pennsylvania. Um, and so I didn't love anybody and everybody being able to see what times I was working and when I was not working. I also did not love any uh. random person being able to go on and just book an appointment and me not know who the hell they are. So for safety reasons, first and foremost, that is something that I, that, that's why I implement that and I suggest it. Um, number two um, is, like I said, if somebody just randomly goes on and books an appointment with me, that's going to cause me a lot of work because I'm like, I don't know who this person is. I'm going to have to reach out to them and ask them who they are and why they want their hair done and what they want with it and what, what their hair is now. And then I may have to reschedule the appointment for a longer time and then the time doesn't work for them and then they end up ghosting me. It just <laughs> yeah. creates a lot of extra work. So I'm a big firm believer of having new every single first first time new client go through the exact same booking process with you which in in which you have a small screening process with digital forms oh okay i make it so every single one of my clients fills out a first service consultation form first and what this allows me to do is has has it has a lot of automations on the back end of it which saves my life and makes things really easy and i'll talk about that in a moment but first and foremost it's going to tell me who the hell this person is it's going to give me one it's going to help me figure out these two things number one is this the right fit for me? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you're gonna have clients and circumstances that aren't gonna be the right fit for you, that you can't serve well because you don't know how to do that service or they just are giving a lot of red flags and you don't want to take a part in that. Um, or number two, uh, what you actually, you'll figure out what how much time you actually need to book to be able to serve them to the, the, uh, the fullest and actually get them to the results that they're looking for. So with these first service consultation forms, you can have them upload uh, pictures of their hair now, what their inspiration and picture looks like. You can ask them what their hair history is, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get the submission on your phone. And then the, the, what I teach uh, my students how to set up is when they get the submission, they can scroll through it. They can see what the T is. And then all these little automated buttons come up. And then somebody just has to click one button. And then it sends an automated email that tells them exactly what they need to book online and what their next steps are. So this yeah. first, so this new client is still booking online with you. It's just they're going through a screening process first that will allow you to have back-end automations to make your life a lot easier and also understand that they are booked for the right thing and also know who the hell this person is and where they're coming from. That's really relevant, especially, I mean, we're a waxing brand. Um, I mean, we're used by estheticians, nail techs, and a lot of cosmetologists. But for waxing, that is very a key point because a lot of estheticians do male waxing. Right. And it, a lot of times, like I would say, if I had to guess, more times than not, it goes in a different direction than they're hoping. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, like for in many different reasons. So just to know who it is, you know, do, do they really need? Like, do they really need a wax? Like, right. how did they hear about you? Like, what? And are also, they is this person has this person been on Accutane for six months? Like, is this person going to be able? So then they show up. And then you you ask them, like, what's your skin history? And they're like, well, I'm on Accutane. And you're like, okay, well, this whole appointment's a flop. I can't do anything, and I'm not going to make any money today. And you just wasted, like, 30 minutes of my time. But it wasn't the client who wasted the time. It was you who wasted your own time because you didn't screen people up front. Yeah, because you didn't take that time or have your system in place to make yeah. sure that the client can actually receive the service before they came. It's a key point. That's why – that is why the consultation – and the waiver system yep. should happen beforehand, Period. not when they get there. And it's like old school, like, oh, like, here's <laughs> your here's your form, like, <laughs> and then you have to put it like in a a file, file. cabinet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you. Yeah, have the more to we know. can digitize, the better. And yeah. and and I, like I said at the beginning of this, a lot of my teachings and a lot of the things that have helped me be successful. I run a multi six figure business now with my education company. I have a team. What has gotten me to where I am today as a successful beauty professional and a business owner that I, with the business I run now 
is treating my business like the same way that these Fortune 500 companies would treat their business is digitizing and making their processes as automated and streamlined as possible and making it so the customer journey is in alignment with the results and outcomes that you're trying to achieve. I think everyone listening today is going to learn so much. And I think this is a really perfect time for you to tell everyone where to find you like how like if they want to learn more if they want to take your course like yeah how, where did like where do they go what do they do yeah so first and foremost guys I have a podcast and I give so much free information on there that is super uh, impactful and tangible and uh, uh, we have 200,000 downloads we're in um, like 70 plus countries at this point and people really do enjoy it so I have the modern hairstylist podcast by Hunter Donia you can listen to that on all podcast platforms it's a great place to start with me to really understand some of my strategies and concepts and start to tip, dip your toes in them. Um, if you really want to get serious about working with me, you can check out all that I have to offer on my website, hunterdonia.com. And you can always connect with me on Instagram. Make sure to DM me and tell me that you heard me on the podcast. And uh, I'll be able to figure out who you are and hopefully uh, get to work with you and support you in whatever way, shape or form. I'm so glad that you took the time out of your day to spend with us a little time. And um, yeah. I think you just have so much to offer. Um, I think people in this industry, especially people, you know, we have a huge everybody now is going into a suite. Yes, everybody. And mm -hmm. so I think that um, they have so much to learn from you. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate this time so much, Callie. I was honored that you asked me to come on here today. I appreciate the facilitation. It was great to get to chat with you. I will also say too, I really appreciate you like just being a human because I think uh -huh. that right now authenticity is something that's rare to find and people are really craving it. And yeah. that's what has really brought me to be doing what I'm doing and teaching what I'm teaching is because I'm just a human and I've had to build systems that have helped that will allow me to just be able to show up and do what I love without all the stress and emotions around it. And I think that us being vulnerable in the way that you have beautifully done today and hopefully myself uh, as well, is something that's uh, hard to find. And I just really appreciate that authenticity and I appreciate this time so much. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh, that's so kind. Thank you so much. And that's exactly how I feel too. I think it was like perfect timing that I saw you, you know, because I usually, usually the guests that I have um, on the show, you know, it might be somebody really well known or someone mm. that's going to talk about techniques, but every once in a while, you know, somebody really catches my eye and I'm like, you know what? I think this is going to be fantastic. Oh, I appreciate so, that. Yeah. You. So you um, enjoy your day and thank, um, you. thank you so much. And um, I think everyone's going to learn so much from you. I hope they do. So much love. Thanks for tuning in, guys. All right. Thanks, Hunter. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And be sure to sign up for our newsletters on our own website, syrupill.com. Remember, it's more than just talk about waxing. We're here for you. You are not alone. And as a thank you for listening, be sure to use our promo code PR podcast 30. It's in all caps when you shop at syrupole.com. Additional terms and conditions may apply.